Sunny Walkman vibe. And they, they're they from Sunny Reno. Sunny or Sony? Uh, they sound like Sony. They sound like a... Uh, I know, right? I said they sound like the, sunny, I said they say, <laughs> I said that they sound sunny and like the Walkman. They sound like they they click a lot. They click a lot and they have a whirring sound. Yeah. No, they're, they they just really, like a Walkman. They have like a sunny beachy type of sound, and they remind me of the band The Walkman. Oh, never heard of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're pretty good, pretty good band. Pretty the good Walkman. Band. Mm-hmm. The Walkman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And. uh I like the, I like people with bodies. Pretty good. Me too. That's my favorite kind of people. Oh. <laughs> Man. Wow. But people with bodies is your favorite type of people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I prefer the... Some interesting band names out there that are pretty cool. Well, you got to kind of be creative these days. Have you ever heard of Diarrhea Planet? Oh, no. That doesn't sound like... Diarrhea Planet is one of the best rock and roll bands out nowadays. Okay, so we're looking at. Wow. We're looking at a dude with a whole bunch of different types of instruments. Well, it's just pots of water. And then. They so got like little tubes in them and stuff. Okay, so this guy's inking. Well, well, it's inking, or I don't know if he's inking, but right, they're inking. The artifacts are the artifacts. They're inking yeah. wild wind instruments. Mm-hmm. But this dude looks like it took an entire sheep to make his outfit. He's got a beanie on. He's got a scarf. He's got like a, he's got like a poncho on. Yeah, looks ethnic. A lot. It looks like he's got a lot of wool. I feel itchy just looking at a picture of this guy. Yeah. I, feel, I already feel like my, I feel like I have to like kind of sc- like scratch a little bit. Dude, like they wool. need to come up with a web, web browser that actually fucking works. Man. What do you mean? What doesn't work for you? What do you Nothing using? works Spark? for me. It's Is all fucking... Form? What? I use Chrome. I use Google Chrome. I use them both, and they're both equally shitty. Both? Like Firefox and Chrome? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're either. both equally shitty. They're both equally shitty. I yeah. think they're fine. Well. I think that I, I do think more it, intensive. I think internet surfing. Oh, apparently. Oh, more intensive, huh? I feel as though. Hey, they got it pretty down. What do you think? What do you think? What would you like uh, for it to be better? Because yeah, you probably do a lot. Well, I. Um, everyone. Blames it on the the flash player because I do a lot of flash videos and shit. Okay, so it's always freezing, doing stupid I'm shit. Alan, you're listening to a fistful of idle on KXLU, and this is people with bodies. All right. We are people with bodies, and so are you. Immediately lost the headphones. Immediately the headphones come off and rocking. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's the hard part. Is jamming with the headphones. Oh yeah, you really gotta watch your head. There's a band called Harrison Ford, F J O R D. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Harrison Fjord. Oh yeah. I'm gonna be excited to have these guys over. I'm not sure if it's gonna be a house show or if it's gonna be over uh, somewhere else, but it's gonna be good. I mean, it's, yeah. Oh, there's Harrison Fjord right there. Well, yeah, that's where I saw that. Oh. <laughs> it's on the side. It's on the uh, uh, up next list. So you keep your autoplay on, so it keeps on showing you cool videos, right? Uh, yeah. Oh. I, I notice that if I turn autoplay on, I will sit and watch so many videos. I never get through the auto autoplay, unless I'm like yeah. doing something. You uh, know, then I'll autoplay some stuff and just walk away, but most of the time I'm sidebar and stuff. It's interesting. 
you know, because yeah, I like to see what comes up on the sidebar. <laughs> Stick and punch. Mr. Motherfucking Esquire. <laughs> it's always such a neat mix of different things that you could be interested in. Bad, bad, not good, Tyler the Creator. Now that is just such a good video. Is it? Yeah, man. Such a good pairing. I want to see more hip hop and jazz connections being made. Yeah. It's so sick. Yeah, especially the bebop form, you know, where you have a head and then a series of solos and then a head. Right. I don't know if you're familiar with the bebop form of jazz. I mean, didn't you just explain to me? Yeah, pretty much. That's <laughs> basically it. You know, and I, I don't see a lot of other music working within that form. Do we have a way to have like the video on our, on top of our video? Not the video, but the audio. I mean, what do you mean? The audio with that video, like, or the audio with our podcast? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Cool. Just playing right now. Okay. Good. 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 Yeah. But there's all kinds of YouTube things. Like certain videos, mm -hmm. you can you can always tell when you're not gonna get shut down for a video when so, it's you're listening to someone else's video on someone else's channel. Oh, okay. Because they haven't got shut down yet. Mm -hmm. But this is straight from Bad Bad Not Goods channel, mm -hmm. so they might have some exclusive rights, and you know, mm -hmm. they know they know when you're listening to someone else's music in your podcast oh, okay they can they like yeah mm -hmm, they, they could do, yeah they do an interesting thing right where they like almost like it seems like they search the wave file or mm -hmm, something they, or the yeah. waveform right now Bandcamp just switched up their uh interface a little while ago not their interface but their uh their uh their layout so i'm trying to find because one thing I love to do on Bandcamp is that it allows you to search through tags, and the tags can be pretty specific yeah. to what you're looking for. And so what I love doing is I love looking uh, through Bandcamp, and I will pick uh, not just cities, but also towns within the country, and I'll find out like all these different groups that come from a place. So I found out about uh, diet, this group called Diet Sigs. Um, oh, that's cool. Because uh, it's, it was a band from uh, New Paltz, New York. Interesting. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. So New Paltz. New Paltz. Yeah. And it turns out that they have a really cool music scene over there. Um, and that's just one example of different types of places that you can just look up. You know. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I, I've just been doing the YouTube thing for so long because I like visuals. You know, oh, yeah. It's never better to not see something. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. Yeah, exactly. So I found this this one time. Let me see if it's these German kids. One of the ads is dads who play Barbies. That sounds like a kink. Man, I, I wish Searching I'd... for dads who play Barbies. Yo, sexy dude. They built sexy. this uh, this little fake room. You know, like a freestanding room out in the middle of this field. Okay. And they did shows in it. So bands would come and... Where is this? It's in Germany. Oh. At some farm or something, dude. It was pretty... Uh, it was sick. Yeah. I think it was Germany. Yep, same thing. I 
would love to know how oh. other countries view and process their music like in mass you know yeah i have a friend who brought a foreign exchange student into their home and uh they were astonished that there were no music stores because in japan they still have like no music mold- stores where in in america or uh first that they made that statement about uh san francisco and then the statement got more intense when they came here to the central valley there's no music stores there's music stores everywhere there's music stores yeah there's definitely music stores but she was and there there definitely are it's not like there aren't but she was noticing that she was making a distinction because in japan you can find a music store like every few blocks well, and she just noticed the difference, and that's the thing. Oh, it's just su- such a su- like it could be a subtle difference, but maybe that's huge. Maybe that's relative to how much. Well, Japan's money a fucking really super music. crowded mm-hmm. island, so yeah. of course everything's yeah. And so they're they're, they're going to have they like, sort of have a captive audience. Yeah. You know what I mean? In in the Central Valley, you can't just do that. But it's not just know? that. It's like in America, there are like. There have been a lot of record stores shutting down. What is it? Was it Virgin Records? It's really hard to find a. Is Amoeba still open in San Francisco? Amoeba is still open. Yeah, uh, but all these places had closed down, and that trend isn't happening the same way it is here over there. No, I mean in the '80s they were in the '50s music, mm-hmm. American '50s music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, '80s was also uh, uh, a huge. Elvis Presley re- revival period, right? He <laughs> was gigantic. Because uh, didn't he die in the eighties? Did he die in the eighties or the late seventies? Uh, I think it was. Uh, I feel like it was nineteen late seventies. Late seventies. Okay. So yeah, people probably still had the fever back then. Right. Yog. I hope this is. Oh yes, this is those guys. This is amazing. So this is the dollhouse. Yeah. And this band looks off the rails. <laughs> lead singer, raccoon mask lead singer is awesome. Has, they're, they're all shirtless and the lead singer has like a bonnet on. And like skull. Cat mask. skull yeah. He has like, it's a cat mask. It's a cat mask. A wolf, a raccoon. And a rabbit. <laughs> the drummer who has a rabbit hat, hat and mask also looks like cake, <laughs> cake with flour from the yeah. from the chin down. Yeah, I'm not sure how many. This sounds pretty intense. This is awesome, dude. Those masks are off the hook. That raccoon one. Yeah, you know, and it's I, there's no way of telling how many people are here watching them. <coughs> I see a shadow of someone. Right, it's all like cloud, cloudy, threatening to rain. It's a beautiful green valley. There's there's sheep, yeah, I sheep see. In the yeah. Background. Oh, there's another person. Okay. Oh yeah. What is this? The basses has like a crazy, like a womb, like a wombat mask. Yeah, that's a raccoon. Oh, it's a raccoon. God, yeah, God. he looks like the raccoon from. Uh, God, this looks like my the one that one movie, Guardians of the Galaxy. Jeez, you know this is like a, a utopian thing where a band can go out into like a farmland and like play like even a crazy band like this, and yet this is also like a nightmare just like waiting to happen. Like I know I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna dream about this. Yeah, this is Yog, Y-O-G, live at the Dollhouse. Y-O-G can get it. This set is amazing. I love that concept of building like a little, uh, yeah, temporary. almost like a diorama, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I like the idea of like temporary spaces. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do that for Art Hop. Build a diorama and have a band perform in it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's a lot of work. And then they have they have one 
They have one piece of furniture in the middle of the field that they in the middle of their. Uh, right. I would call it a stage, but it's not a stage. There's Just, a little bed up there and a lamp, and there's a desk with oh, another shit, lamp on shit, there. That's cool. It looks like you could they you could live or at least mini sleep house. in. Yeah, yeah. You definitely you, you know definitely they party there. in that shit, dude. It's probably some sh- yeah. It's shelter too. Yeah. Nice. Right. Yog. 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 Live at the dollhouse. Now, this was be- from back in 2007. Oh, yeah. That's a while ago. So, I don't but know how well the dollhouse is doing now. It's gone, dude. It's gone. Yeah, it was probably... I, I, I mean, I never... I mean, I don't understand whatever language they speak. So... What is this? Ooh, in- Yog has an actual name? album, though. Oh, when was... When was this posted? 2012. The little progression. Yeah, this is about five years after that video. Something like that. Or at least when no, it was 2007. Po- at least when it was posted. Yeah, it's yeah. Oh yeah. Math. <clears throat> Half the sky. But I mean, looks like this is the name of the album. Oh yeah, definitely the same band. Oh yeah, definitely the same band. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh that hi hat. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, these guys can still get it. Let's see. 2012. Hey, what's five years from 2012? Yeah. Right now. Right now, man, 2017. Hey, Yaga, are you going to come yes. back every five years? You seem to come out with some type of uh, big work. First, it was live at the dollhouse. You broke some boundaries. You right. turned some heads. You won some Grammys. They were German Grammys. Some but German still, Grammys. But you still, they were the Grammys, but you still, you were still building. Then you came out with Half the Sky. Half the Sky, dude. Pit That's of Yaga. That's crazy, man. Nine years ago, Grindcore Deluxe. What band can say that they they made half the sky, made half the Guys, sky. You're doing it now. This yeah. year, oh jeez, this year, what's y'all gonna do? Going to come up with something crazy. And Mark, I wanted to ask you about heavy music. Heavy music. Yeah, heavy music. Like like hard to carry. I did not grow up listening to a lot of heavy music. No. Mm-mm. Hmm. I grew up on a lot of jazz, a lot of pop. Interesting. I found out about like the Beatles and stuff. And I was interested in a couple of like rock groups. It's actually kind of weird. I, I the, my first like introduction to heavy music right. was really symphonic. I was interested in this. this what, what band was that? I was really interested in this uh, band from Japan called X. Okay. And they were they were like a thrash metal. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Uh huh. They yeah. were kind of like a a huge group in Japan. Right. But they had they had a like a uh, to th- say thrash gives it a little is a little bit too hard hard yeah. for what it was. But it was definitely like I would say more like somewhere in between Hardcore. glam and thrash. Oh right, right. Yeah. But they had like a sim a real symphonic uh, vibe going on to where they had like ballads and a lot of even their like really pounding tunes had I'd say Dahlia is a good Dahlia. song to listen to or Weekend or that um, right there but oh but they uh, Letterman 83 well here's the thing is that they started their career out as X but when they came when they started looking into branching themselves out into the west they changed their name to X Japan so X is also the name of a very important seminal LA hardcore punk group Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Actually, maybe... What? I don't know if X is actually... I could call them a hardcore group. I don't have problems typing X Japan, Kiss the Sky. I guess that's... <coughs> that might be a new song or something. Because these guys came back, but basically that was my... This was like... 
this was my introduction to heavy music. Hmm. So, up until then, I was... It really wasn't anything that I would listen to, and I started branching out into it, but I would really just kind of get into heavy music that kind of uh, interested, interested me on other fronts, too, you know? Well, yeah, I can already tell you this is glam. This isn't even... It's not them. Oh, it might have, might have been. It's just Is not it? the. It's just not the official channel. It's like a live mix or something. Yeah, that was pretty awful. And, that, and plus, this is the band nowadays. This is new song. Yeah. I'll well, see this will buy video too. 2015. So this dude's name is uh, Hayashi Yoshiki. Yeah. So he's the piano player and the drummer for X and X Japan. So in itself, he and he's kind of he writes all the music, almost all of the music, and he writes almost all of the lyrics. And that in itself would have been something that could set him apart from most drummers. And, oh, yeah. And from his position that, like, other people have with their But band. once you get drumming, you know, it's not really that far mm -hmm. um, of a leap. Oh, yeah. And, but that would be, and he's an incredibly uh, fast, hard player. Yeah. Um. And that would be enough to kind of say, like, yeah, he's a really important person, like, even within, just within music. But... Yeah, well, so far what I'm looking at is really glam. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah, as they progressed and as they grew older, they became a lot more reliant on their ballads. Um, but this dude is the record producer. He, when X became a band, he created a record label called Ecstasy to promote their music and he kind of uh, so X Japan for a long time was one of the best selling groups in Japan but they did it on a label that they created oh that's yeah that's a good so idea so that dude that drummer Yoshi <coughs> Hayashi he got he was totally like let's see Ecstasy Records let's see of course play on the X Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah, pretty clever. But they have distribution within like Warner Music Group. Like, oh yeah, huge, mm -hmm. huge uh, piano player here. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then he founded a rec another record label called Platinum Records in April 1992, and it's an affiliate of Poly. Well, I'm looking for the thrash part. So name a song to our because. Um, so far, there's. N oh, I know, right? Yeah, this is. These are all very new songs. These are all songs that had n no impact on me. Um, so give me, give me up, a song. Uh, I'm trying to like. Look up uh, jealousy. Oh yeah, man. Woo! It just got. He's got a. It feels like a dairy in here. Yeah. These guys got. These guys were definitely not afraid of cheese. Well, I mean, that's a whole different silent jealousy. Yeah, there you go. Nineteen ninety-two. Oh yeah, I and mean, here's a live video. So here's them at there. Now here's the them at kind of the peak of their their thrash inspired days. Okay. Ninety-two. That makes sense.
this is just an interesting intersection that of like looking at extra pan stuff but I didn't expect that that's cool but uh what is like your your introduction to heavy music and uh, what was it because for Deep me it was Purple, like yeah and then Scorpions wow and then Metallica you're, this is basically almost like the growth of whereas to me I have to be inspired by all these things by what hits me the first you went through the evolution of heavy metal. Right. Like, in a, it basically, it's an entirety. Right. <laughs> yeah. So what... So it... Oh, what are we listening to? Orange, Orange 9, 9 millimeter. millimeter. Okay. Now, what were these guys around? The same, th- same time, 90s. <laughs> oh, okay. 1996. 96, all right. Yeah. It's a little slower than I remember it. But I used to consider these guys thrash. Yeah. You I don't know. know. Maybe this is more. Wow. I had the same. I, I had the different. same moment with X, with X where I'm like, yeah, they were kind of a little glammy, a little thrashy, and then I listen and to it's it, like, I'm like, you're like, no, no. That, that, that takes away so much credit for Weird. the actual thrash bands. What? Well, let me see if we can go to a, a little more forward on the album. I guess Slayer would be the the ultimate thrash band. Ultimate? Well, for a little yeah. while, they like were the all... Like the perfect example of thrash metal. Yeah. I think so, wow. too. Hmm. I love this album, though, when it, when it came out. Yeah, this is a little... Um... It's not thrashy as I remember it, though. Because they had a it's sort of more punky set when I saw them. They played the first warp tour on the side stage. This doesn't sound like hip hop, so I can't say it's like anything like new metal or anything. Or, but what was? It, it sounds, sounds like fucking. Uh, s- sounds a little sludgy. Sounds a little kind of like the Melvins at times. It sounds like that band that did Hey Man, Nice Shot. Which band was that? Hey Man, Nice Shot. Hey, you don't remember that? I don't remember that. It was like a Nine Inch Nails best friends. Filter. Yeah, I think their downfall. They did this uh, fashion show, and just never heard from them again. Really? Yeah. They're not like the weekend where you can do that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. But this song was about a politician. I forgot which one, but he fucking blew his brains out on live TV. A politician did that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So it was like, so they're like, hey man, nice shot. <laughs> oh, wow. Right. But they always kind of reminded me of what Trent Reznor was doing at the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You remember this song or what? Well, we'll get, it'll get to the chorus. I don't right. remember this part. No? Uh-uh. <laughs> That's probably been in so many TVs and movies and shit by now. was hey man nice shot I thought this was now, if you said now it, it's like the uh, Alice in Chains sort of vibe if you just made two cat noises <coughs> you'd be like, meow, meow, I would be oh. like oh yeah so that's, that's what filter, you thought he was doing hey man nice shot yeah oh, alright mm-hmm. hey cat nice shot <laughs> meow, meow 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 nice shot <laughs> anyway I was always intrigued by that dude blowing his head off. Wow. <laughs> That's a pretty pretty edgy topic. 
That's that dude. Cool. I wonder if, uh, man. You know, one of the most interesting politicians to watch right now is just that Ted Cruz dude. Ted Cruz? Yeah, Ted Cruz. He has this face that just makes me like, what are you thinking, dude? He's just got this, like, right? he looks like he's always pondering something and he's always saying some goofy stuff. I mean, I don't know if this is a racist or not, but he, like, reminds me of a car wash owner or something. Yeah, in a he suit. Kinda, he kind of, yeah, he kind of just, he kind of looks like. He doesn't seem like a normal politician kind of guy. No, he's definitely not normal. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, was nine, was like, uh, orange nine millimeter, were those guys, like, pretty, like, important to what you were going through in the 90s? Mm. No, I just remember seeing them at the Warp Tour. Yeah, yeah. I went there to actually go see Quicksand. Quicksand. Yeah. You know who they are? Yeah, that's a. Right, that dance song. Uh. Uh-uh. Quicksand. No. It's a band. It's a it's a band. It took an entire yeah. band to make that song. No, it's a whole band. That's weird. Is the band Hole? 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 No. The Cor- whole band? No, Courtney Love. Baser. Oh, that's a good song, I think. But he did uh, Rival Schools. What was the band after Quicksand? Where did you just point to? Oh, Rabbit Schools. There you mm-hmm. go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. United by Fate. It's a little above the. Can I touch the. Air? Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah it's above that. It. No, you're just touching the window. Okay. It's more like right there, right above the Star Trek. So this is. <laughs> this is my. You know, I could get really good at miming and just kind of. If anyone's just, li- if anyone's just listening, I'm just trying to find the. Where the, where the edges of the video are. Let me out Quicksand. Phaser. F A Z E R. To a lot of people, this is old news, but I've never heard of the script before. Really? You've never heard of Oh, that's weird. They did a. Um... Well, I think that that's one of the things about growing up in the Central Valley is that for so long it was like whatever music I come across is dependent on. Just what her. people show me, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, I suppose. I mean, we just a lot of us grew up with this band, so. Yeah. I mean, around here. So yeah, yeah I, they, you travel around and you're like, hey, you heard of Quicksand? You're like what? Yeah. Can, can you pigeon- you don't want to step in it? <laughs> <laughs> can you pigeonhole their style of metal, like thrash, sludge? It's not really metal. It's, it's not metal. metal. Yeah. If it's not metal, then what is it? It's like, I don't know. Some you heavy know. indie rock kind of stuff. Really? Yeah, I think that's what we considered indie rock that's when neat. we were listening to it. If it'll play, I mean, there's the Vivo video, so we're definitely getting flagged for this. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, man. <laughs> I'm looking at I just remembered something interesting that I wanted to tell you about. Which is the Voyager Golden Records. Voyager Golden Records, what's that? <laughs> they launched and by they I mean NASA, um they created a phonograph record that was uh, aboard the Voyager spacecraft that they oh, yeah. launched in 1977, and it create it contains like sounds and songs that are uh, like of Earth. So there's like there's there's it ranges from popular songs. No, yeah, I know that. that yeah, the, it's like a golden like, record, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, literally, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and uh into like babies and like mothers talking to children and stuff like that here's a quicksand quicksand nice oh yeah (laughs) 
Whoa. Right. When did this come out? It was 90s too. 90s too? Also. What year, what year is this? Well, right now, this the year is 2017. <laughs> what year is this? <laughs> Mark! Where what year I, is this? Where am I? I just became lucid. I just watched Arrival oh, earlier. Now that's a good movie. You seen that? Yes. Yeah, it was pretty trippy. Like, you know, because yes. it was like how they did the time thing. Uh huh. But see, the only problem I had with that was that they introduced the, uh, the little girl a little too soon then, if that was what was going on. Because I was like, what the fuck's with this little girl? What, you know, how's this, you know? And then you eventually find out why, right? Mm-hmm. And so. <coughs> Yeah, the, the, I was like, yeah, the, isn't that how they started the movie? With the little girl, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so it's like, no, yeah, she, they shouldn't have started that shit until after. You think so? Yeah, because how is she, because she doesn't... Well, that's kind of integral. Well, I don't want to spoil it. You know what I mean? Well, we can, I think, well... That, but she I, doesn't I think understand gonna, what's okay, going okay, on everyone, until she gonna, understands what's gonna, going on. Everyone, we're going to be talking about Arrival, and we might mm-hmm. even talk about some other movies that are nominated for the Oscars. So if these are movies that have been out for a while, and I just want to let everyone know that if you're listening and if you haven't seen Arrival, if you haven't seen Moonlight, if you haven't seen... So Any we're gonna go spoiler. We're talk. gonna go full spoiler. We're gonna go full into yeah. Cause All right. Okay. Yeah. Because people okay. are gonna wa- l- l- if people b- listen to this podcast further right. than you know a couple months from now, then mm-hmm. they're gonna want to hear our opinion on these things. Right. Okay. So, um, as she s- begins to understand the language, mm-hmm. right, that's when the flashes s- should start. You know what I mean? The first time she understands a symbol. That's when she should have, you know, because what the, what, to understand that language is to open up time, is is basically what the what I got from that. So before she was having the little girl flash before she even met the aliens. Well, then again, I guess if she opened up time, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So then, yeah, okay. I, I just think, figured it out on my own. I think the tool. I think that there was that uh, an editing and story tool that it used mm-hmm. to create a feeling throughout the the first part of the film, and then I think it also uh, achieved something else. So the thing about the first part of the film is that when you see Amy Adams walking into work on the day that the aliens have arrived, right, you're connecting that with what came before and so it looks it seems as though she's coming into this event from a from a sense of despondency and it get to me it gave me the because i asked myself that same question whoa this is like this is a pretty interesting part of this character that's being shown up front and seems like it's contained up front (sighs) it it's it it wraps itself up. Which the which little the, girl storyline? The little girl storyline. Oh, uh, okay. She has a child that she loses, and right. to me it seemed like okay, this seems like pretty important to her character. Right. How she's going to handle the this event, and so that definitely told informed a lot about her. Mm-hmm. But then when it's revealed that the aliens have a language that is based on their ability to perceive time and the flow of like time as something that's uh, almost very uh, uh, Fahrenheit 451e kind of like where you you're able to sense and see like I don't time get that reference continuum. oh okay it was a book by um, um, wait was it Fahrenheit 451 oh no I'm confusing books I'm thinking of um uh, Slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse uh, <laughs> five. Alright. Slaughterhouse five where there's an nothing. by Kurt Vonnegut. <laughs> <laughs> it was like yeah. there it's the idea that aliens are multi dimensional and a part of the uh, the idea of them being multi dimensional is that they can see and perceive time right. as a little bit more it's in a little bit more physical sense is like non-linear. Mm-hmm. So once I found out about that, then it became oh, so it the movie because the director uh, the director of Solaris, um, okay, 
uh, what is his name? The director of Solaris, uh, Andre Tarkovsky, okay. he says that film is uh, a creation of a certain type of time continuum. And so what I felt like Arrival did to me is it created a time continuum in which I am seeing the events of her life from that alien perspective of seeing the time continuum. Because even though she hasn't lost a child yet throughout the main plot of the film, right. I already know that about her character. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I was like, oh shit. So like, I'm seeing things like the alien. Like, I know what's going to happen to her in her life. Oh, right. And that's a good plot twist because then I watched the But story. I don't know. They didn't determine if that was how things worked. It might not have been. Like, I, you know. It might not I have can been. see my timeline and you interacting in my timeline, but I can't see your timeline. Right. Other than the parts that we're interacting. Sure. But I mean, I'm already so. watching a film. I'm already watching from a, a window that doesn't right. okay. exist, you know. Right. And I, yeah, that was that was it, when a plot twist can actually change. You watch a film over again, you go, mm-hmm. "Oh shit!" Now I'm watching it from, like the Usual sus- Suspects did that really well. Okay, changes things around. The Sixth Sense did that really well. You watch it again. You oh go, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that was pretty trippy. And, uh, the The Sixth Sense. Oh man, I'm gonna be out of town on Sunday. Oh yeah. That'd be really neat to get a to. Uh, maybe we should do this by Monday. What's that? Do you think that by Monday you and do you think it'd be possible for you and I to watch every like um, just about every movie that was nominated for the Oscars? What? Every movie this year? Yeah. Oh. Because the Oscars are on Sunday, and I'm going to be out of town. I, but I've seen a good amount of some of the films that were nominated for an Oscar, but I would like to be actually able to, or is that too much? That's only in like two, that's only in like three. Well, I'm going to look at it and see if it's possible. Well, the thing is we don't have to watch every, we don't have to do this by the Oscars. We can just do this by next podcast podcast. Yeah, just show me the fucking goddamn list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Arrival. What is that? Uh, uh, fences. Fences. Hacksaw Ridge. Hell or High Water. Hidden Figures. La La Land. Lion. Manchester by the Sea and Moonlight. Well, and that's the best I, picture list. I would be in trouble because I've only seen one of those. <laughs> mm. Which one? Yeah. It was Arrival. 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 Yeah. Fence. Yeah. I mean, I, I wanted to watch Hacksaw Ridge. I heard that was pretty bloody, though. Oh, yeah. And that's so pretty, I was like, mm, that's pretty intense. I'm not really into that kind of shit. Oh, okay. Okay. Then that's a substan- That's a more of a substantial challenge on you. Because I've watched. Yeah. Uh, who who did. Uh, what the fuck was I watching? They just got all gruesome. Oh, Outsiders. What's that? It's like this uh, isolated family in the hills. I think it's Kentucky or some shit like that. Is it a film? No, it's a television series. Oh, well. And uh, did you ever watch Sons of Anarchy? I watched a few episodes. One of the one of the main characters, the guy with long hair. I forgot his fucking name. Bob? Not Bob. I thought that would be a good guess. Jax's best friend. The guy with the I beard. I know Jax is. I know who Jack is. Yeah. Has a beard, younger dude. Okay. Anyway, he's in The Outsiders. And, uh, yeah, it's just a family that lives on this mountain. And uh, I think they're trying to get the coal out of the mountain, some company. So they're trying to get them off the mountain. So like, it's just like the battle okay. Okay. to get them off. And so they're like uh, old school hill people, you know, got some weird traditions and different stuff. Mm-hmm. They have uh, their leaders called the Brennan. So, I don't know. It's interesting how we cut up and we distinguish the amount of time that's necessary to tell these stories. Like, if you want mm. to release a film, 
there's something that says because the, the something is what will get it into theaters your movie has to be between 90 minutes and say like 200 something right that's the general acceptable rate for a theatrical film or if you have a TV show it's a story that will be told for eight hours like right ten longer hours stories. longer story and it's not always um, figured out mm-hmm. you know what I mean yeah like you, they sort of write the story and you you plan for a second season but that doesn't necessarily mean you will make it to the second season right you know what I mean so, and so they, sometimes they have to to restart the story up so that's when a, a season can lag. Yeah. You get and season four of Walking Dead when they just yell at each other for a whole fucking season. Like, oh my God, that was so annoying. <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah. So that, whole, that series is slow. Yeah. It's whole, so slow. The whole second, I'm really surprised that that show made it past the second season. Once it did, it got, it got way better. But that second season was I mean, zombies are so, so 2010. Problems. Oh yeah, man. So it's 2010. All right. Well, here, here's what's going on. Mm. I'm gonna, I'm looking through this list, right? And mm. I'm seeing a few movies that are are getting repeated here. My life as a zucchini. That's right. a that's animated. nominated for best animated feature film. Right. <laughs> I'm seeing La La Land. Uh huh. Repeatedly. That's in a lot of these. Yeah. Hacksaw Ridge and Manchester by the Sea and Casey Affleck. Who I'm a fan of. Mm-hmm. Oh, but then we gotta watch the documentaries. Fire at Sea. Well, how about we just say that I we... am not your Negro. Life animated. OJ three made. O- no, oh. OJ looks like made in three. America. Yeah, and thirteenth. Well, how about we? Fuck, there's a lot of shit here, dude. There is, dude. Well, we can't. Okay, well, feasibly we can't. I don't, I don't think that we can make the time. For, to watch every single film, we could, however, watch. That, no, that's what the, I was saying. The top three. Top three. Yeah. Oh, do you think top three or the every just the best pictures? Dude, I don't want to watch all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> you want to or don't? Yeah, watch? I do. Of I course. Do I am. I'm, I'm just interested in because I know I've tried to to edit and make videos and tell a story, mm-hmm. and it's. It's not easy, Mm-mm. and I've seen I've had friends who've done it, and to to do a movie that's actually like mm-hmm. mainstream. I mean, I know they like the big guys; they all got their formulas already all down. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're fucking just throwing money. Oh, oh geez, fucking billion oh, yeah, dollar and budgets and their per- and, and they're shit. they're purposely releasing <laughs> these films. Around Oscar season, most of these films oh, yeah. are still in theaters. Mm-hmm. Even though there is a little bit of people were disappointed that there are a couple of disappointments. I'll say, I'll mention the disappointments in a second, but I'm putting a substantially bigger task on you. Cause scroll down to the best picture list, if you will. Okay, thank you. See, I've seen, I've seen Arrival, Hidden Figures, La La Land, Manchester by the Sea, and Moonlight. Pretty so so the only films I would have to see to uh, see all the best pictures are Fences, Hacksaw, Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, and Lion. I have to watch all of them, but which one. yeah, that's the thing is like that yeah. that makes it substantially more feasible on my part. Right. I can go hell yeah, Ryan Gosling. But there's already sexy bitch, sexy bitch. Casey Affleck, sexy bitch. Andrew yeah. Garfield, sexy bitch. Viggo Mortensen, sexy bitch. Dance right, a lot of bitch. Sexy, sexy bitch. bitch. Oh, we got a lot Damn. of sexy bitches. Might as well be sexiest bitch in the lead role. Mm. Is Denzel the token black guy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it. That's There's, fucked up, man. Seems like it. And who do we got for actresses? Isabel Hubert for L. Haven't heard of that one. Ruth. Uh, I I, don't, I can't say her last name. I, it's not it's not as acceptable. <laughs> Ruth Nega. <laughs> Ruth Nega, uh, for her. Well, film. see that you made it racist. I you you, like, you stressed the Nega. Yeah, <laughs> Ruth Nega. This is her name. This is her name. M e g g a. No. Uh, for loving Natalie Por- Natalie Portman for Jackie. 
Um, Emma Stone. I didn't know Natalie Portman was playing Jackie. Uh, Emma Stone for La La Land and Meryl Streep for Florence Foster Jenkins. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> what a great name. What is that? Florence Foster Jenkins. I never even heard of that. Fucking Meryl Streep, dude. Really? Yeah. Is that just like a gimme? Like just they're call, just like, just call right. it the Meryl Streep like, Awards. Give you the fucking award. Just die. Oh, man. What the fuck? Die. You don't have to wish her to die. You can just hope that they give some other focus well, on some people. That's not like her real name, is it? She can go be back to Jill. Fucking Who, what's Florence Foster Murphy? Jenkins? It's a biographical... Oh, it's okay. It's a biographical drama comedy. A New York heiress who became an opera singer known for her painful lack of singing skills. Whoa. That sounds pretty funny. But sounds pretty a, funny. It just... You know, uh, no wonder it wasn't nominated for Best Picture. It's a it's a right. it's a Hugh Grant movie. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant plays her husband and manager. Nocturnal Animals. Oh no, that has an interesting name. Michael Shannon's nominated for Best Actor in a Supporting Role. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Actress in a supporting role, Viola, Viola Davis for Fences. Now I thought she had a starring. I thought she had a starring role in that movie. No, 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 no. Women can't have starring roles. <laughs> well, I thought that she was the lead alongside uh, um, uh, Denzel Washington. Costume design, fantastic beast. And where to find them? La La Land again. Yeah, La La Land's nominated for. I think it's the. Uh, I think that they have a, a record. They're tying the record for most most nominated film. They have fourteen best nominations. Best directing. Best directing. Best rival film. hacksaw ridge. Oh, you know what? I don't like how under directing they don't mention who the they don't say who the director is. Yeah, that is kind of fucked up, huh? They just say underneath the actor it says an actress. It says it doesn't just say the film. It says their names. There's usually only one or two directors. Yeah, what? Yeah, come on. Come on. A man called Of? Is that Of? A man called Disney. Of? Is that one? Is what? That Disney's. Disney's. Which, which one is that? Scroll, scroll to where right you're Makeup and high st- hairstyling. It's called A Man Called Of. Of. Oh, A Man Called O-V-E. A Man Called Of. Yeah, oh, I, I don't know how. Oh. Is that how you spelled? Or was Of uh UV. The dude that drew Mickey Mouse. Oh. His I don't name know. was of. Stan uh, Lee? Didn't Stan what? Lee draw draw Mickey Mouse? What? Stan Lee? No. Wasn't it him? Just wasn't no. wasn't Disney doesn't Disney own Marvel? I don't know. Well, maybe. Didn't Stan they own Star didn't Wars Stan Lee make And they're killing it. Guy. I like fucking. Oh, I like house. Star Wars now that it's in Disney's hands a lot better than fucking what George Lucas did to it last time. It almost seems Son a little. Bitch. It almost seems a little quaint that at one what? point there was just a kooky old man still running Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> like Star Wars is like there's a there's probably yeah. there's probably about a hundred people that I think are it's in full on revival, of man. The directing decisions. Oh yeah, probably. You know what's weird? It's like yeah, it's like that part of it makes. The prequel seemed like, wow, can you believe that? I didn't even know that last director. I thought it was going to be J.J. Abrams again. Oh, yeah. Um, but it wasn't. It's another guy. It's a dude that's uh, mm-hmm. direct. It's a dude that directed the best Breaking Bad episodes. Oh, interesting. Yeah. They're like, hey, you want to do some Star Wars? He's like, fuck yeah. Yeah, I'll do some Star Wars. Yeah, he, he's yeah. got some fucking fuck it money now. <laughs> fuck it. Yeah. Who, who has some fuck it money? That dude. Which dude? Oh, the, the that, director that, of that, Rogue that director, One, yeah, the guy whose name I can't remember. Oh, the director of Rogue One is yeah. the one that you're talking about. Rogue yeah. One, that that guy was uh, it was M Night Shyamalan. No, it wasn't. It was Gareth Edwards, is his name. And he right. also did he did Monsters in 2010. What is that? Monsters was. Uh, takes place years after a NASA probe crash in Mexico, which leads to the sudden appearance of giant tentacled monsters. Nice. God. Nice. Oh, great. They were like, you're doing you went the from next Star Wars. Star Wars. Wars. Yeah. That's a come up, dude. He, put, he did a, he did a yeah. Trump right there. He it said, was the Illuminati. The Illuminati approached him and, hey, you want to make some fuck it money? Right on. Hey, Illuminati, yeah. I'm right here. In case you don't know, fuck it money is when you have enough money that you can just say fuck it. Give a fuck. 
I figured that out. I, I, still really need seen, to I still haven't seen Rogue One. No? Feels horrible, yeah. I like you know, it. Considering it that good. we're talking about films that like, oh yeah, of course, like people yeah. are, people have seen these. I'm not necessarily a Star Wars fan, but I am a science fiction fan. So, Come on. So but I you do like, like you like Star Wars. I do I do like it they much better it. now. I like the new incon what, incarnations. I like the I like the original the old, series. What's wrong with the old incarnations. The old ones, the real old ones are yeah. awesome. Oh, okay. Then the, there was three shitty ones, and then now we got two good ones. Which are the shitty ones? <sighs> Your generation. My generation. Yeah. Your generation. Hey, we're starting with the same Phantom time. Menace, and then. Oh, and then those the, three. Yeah, they should have just called it bitch out. ass, bitch ass menace. Those are the man. <laughs> have you ever seen the Mr. Plinkett reviews on that movie? Nope. Oh, I don't even know who Mr. So Plinkett is. So funny. Mr. Plinkett is a character that was made by this uh, this other YouTube cha- channel. Uh, okay. And uh, he's just this crotchety old dude that's like, he's like obsessed with Star Wars. But he's like, the, the character is so obsessed with the prequels that he, uh, he just goes into depth talking at length about point by point what sucks about the prequels. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah. There's tons of critiques on that. But he's uh, also, the character is also like some type of a serial killer as well. Oh yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's putting. Yeah, I'd like to do that. I'd like to do that by at least next week's episode. Oh, that's not gonna happen for me, dude. No, yeah, I, yeah, I got too much shit going on. I, I can't watch all those movies. Well, that's why I'm stretching it out yeah. to next week. It's like, fuck. <laughs> Okay. I, I just watched one movie and then I just watched one movie. I just watched one movie months. last week. Six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been like six months since I've seen a movie. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, I'm like a TV series and YouTuber. I watch a lot of YouTube videos and Oh. Yeah, I don't really oh, just right. watch movies. Really? Yeah, it's too much commitment. It, I do feel like it's kind of intense saying, do I want to do this thing for two, for two hours? For two hours. Sometimes two and a half hours if the movie's really good and epic. Right. Yeah. Or fucking that is a directed by Peter Jackson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three and a half. Jesus. Oh, I, I was watched, cool with The Lord of the Rings, but I watched, the fucking Hobbit bullshit oh was bullshit. I, watched, was bullshit. I, watched, I saw King Kong in theaters, and I thought it was great. I watched King Kong a couple like <laughs> a, a couple of weeks ago. Right. Oh my god, this movie is terrible. That's pretty bad. It's a it's pretty bad. It's a bad movie. Yeah. It's it is. It is what it was. Or it, it was is, hey, it is what, what it was. was, baby. I mean they made some fucking amusement park rides and made yeah, some it's money. King, it's King Kong. King yeah, Kong. All Jack all Black, time. he did his thing now. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like it was great watching Jack Black run, successfully run in front of and get away from a raptor. <laughs> that was uh, that was great. Was, was that the one where like it gets moment. dark and then all the bugs and shit come out? It's all mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's what life is like for animals on the planet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that's <laughs> intense. <laughs> intense. I'm talking about like that. We that's a great movie to watch with a big group of people and just make fun of. Yeah, that would be a good one. It's a good one. It's a so good one. bad. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know it's why like I thought that. of Strange Brew. Have you seen that movie? Strange Brew. No, I no? haven't seen it. The fucking two brothers from Canada. What? Yeah. Two bros from Canada. And they're going to shut down a brewery. What? Yeah, and they're trying to stop the brewery from getting shut down. <laughs> okay. Oh, what, Rick Moranis is in this? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You've never seen that? Nah, I've never seen it. Uh, yeah. Sounds awesome. I forget how young you are. <laughs> yeah, I was born in 1990. Oh, wow. Yeah. Trippy. No, <laughs> trippy. Super trippy, man. Trippy, man. Trippy. I was already done with high school by then. Uh, more and more of my friends are younger. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like Younger than you? You'd like... As I'm growing older, I'm meeting more good friends at the age of like 23, 24. You know, I'm getting used to. Yeah, yes. it's a drop in the bucket. It's a drop in the bucket, but I'm still like, well, I, oh, I cool. Kinda... Like I'm almost, I'm almost thirty. This is interesting. Yeah, yeah. I got some uh, 
Yeah, just because of the business. I got pretty rigged. Pretty good the business. Because <laughs> the business. You know, because that business be booming. That no, business be booming. You got a pinky ring. music. Hey, show the guys your pinky ring, man. You got a pinky ring? The business of music? The bi- oh, the you music. You typically business. maintain a large age group of friends. Yeah. A variety. That's true. But what kind of business did you think? Killing people, business. my side hustle, business. my hitman side hustle. Bitman, bitman, business is what I think you were talking about. What? <laughs> I don't know. It's funny when people you talk have a about microphone. The I have headphones on, and I didn't understand what you said. Now business. Well, that doesn't that's, that's help. I'm talking about business. What kind of business? <laughs> Killing people business, or <laughs> smuggling drugs across the border the business, business or stealing hubcaps. <coughs> All types of businesses. All types of business. Entrepreneur. Mm. You gotta have a side hustle, man. That's delicious. You gotta have a side hustle for your side oh. hustle. Oh, weird, weird bit of trivia. Rick Moranis went to elementary school with Getty Lee. <laughs> oh, yeah. Neat. Uh-uh. Oh shit! What's wrong? Someone's gonna have a baby. <gasps> Someone's gonna have a baby? Who could it be? People fucking. Someone has. Someone's born every second. I heard. I heard that. No. Yeah. How many babies born each day? A lot. Tell me. According to the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, interesting group, uh, there are 3,952,841 babies born annually in the United States. Say that number again. 3,952,841. Wow. Babies. You could have just rounded that shit off. (laughs) (laughs) 3 million babies. Yeah, well, they've got it. (laughs) Apparently, they've got it down to the Every day? Every year. Oh, every in year. In the United States. Oh, I thought it was just fuck. Every year. Because I thought you I thought you asked the question how many babies are born every day. This and equal, then I was in the middle of a text. This equals about two thousand eight hundred and twenty nine births daily. Two thousand? Two thousand. Closer yeah. to closer to eleven thousand. So there's a good chance that some, well, I mean, yeah, somebody is in the middle of giving a birth right now. Okay. And then right now. then the opposite is also true. Oh yeah. People are leaving us. Yeah. But there's more people joining us than leaving us. How many people? People die every day. <laughs> oh, whoops. Uh, people at the I so- accidentally changed my search to how many babies die every day. People at the soul factory are working overtime. Soul factory. Chunking out, chunking out souls. Chunk, chunk. I'm like, dude, you got to have more babies. We got too many souls. 360 okay so world birth and death rates there's 360,000 births per day okay there's only 151,600 people that die every day so it's twice so as it's, many yeah. almost there's less than there's less than half uh, people die as that wow. is born i said there's a weird confusing sentence but yeah well have no fear because you could take every city, town, and village on the planet and put them all together, and it's not even half the continent of Australia. Right. There's plenty of room. But there's no need for us to be fighting over. There's plenty of room, but so retarded. Dude. You've got it. Yeah, but you've got it. It's interesting what it's what it takes to build a like a city. You know what I mean? Because oh, I, yeah. I think the same thing yeah, too. Yeah. When I when I travel across the country and I don't see anything for eight hours you know the problem with the problem with history is i'm gonna take your shit no that, please those, don't no those groups of people that just cruise around like the vikings you know mm-hmm. and they just go oh yeah i don't need to make nothing on my own i'll just take your shit you know and so that's like a perpetuating attitude that's been around for a long time so just gotta wait till that shit dies out Eventually, every human, hopefully, will realize, oh, yeah, we don't need to fucking keep fucking with each other. We can do it together, man. Well, yeah. But you can't wait. I mean, we can grow the world's food supply in this valley that we live in. Mm-hmm. That's that's all you need for the, mm-hmm. the people that, I mean, you just yeah. need to do it. But I think that 
sure there's one aspect of us that like new world we, order man sure, like i feel like that's one thing like we will we will thrive like that's why castles were so such an integral part of our society growing with oh, yeah. when people lived inside oh, a castle yeah, they, they were didn't have to worry about and shit. Yeah, yeah so if you lived in a castle your society can begin to grow because you don't have to worry about being pillaged all the time mm-hmm. so i feel like that's one thing but then it's another thing to have a group of people just go out into a place that's great to live in but that no one lives no one lives around like just for like a group of people to to you look at all the expanse of land that is totally good to live on and just no one lives there and it's kind of interesting to imagine but it's not though every like yeah so you don't want to live on arable land arable yeah which means you can grow food non-arable land is places you can't well, so there's the, both expanses that you see within... Well, food needs to be grown on where food can be grown. It, it's sure. pretty much that whole attitude, like, if we can grow food here, we shouldn't build, build a, put a building here. Sure. it's Because there's plenty of other places that you can't grow food sure. that you should put the building. Well, so. that will always, that'll always be a, a factor but that's in where not you what happens. live. But what I'm t- saying is it's weird to imagine that people are going to come out to the middle of nowhere just to... Just to live there, just so that they do, just so that deep, yeah, in small amounts. Well, there's that the community down in the desert. It's just like lawless. They're like a bunch of fucking outcasts, and Mm -hmm. you know. Well, that's a pretty interesting thing, but I mean, I imagine that takes at least a small town's worth of people. Oh yeah, you know. What do you mean? What takes a small town? To like have to town. have like to even have a town, you know? yeah. Of course. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Otherwise, it's just a camp. Yeah. And then you have a few more people. It's a village. So it's like, how do we? It's like moving into those expanses is what's ultimately gonna help huge population clusters of people. Is like, well, people just have to move out to out and create new places. But what's the incentive for people to? Oh, that's what it's called. Slab city. city. Slab city. Slab city. Slab city. Slab, yeah. city. slab, I slab city. Have a nice little fucking middle class nice. fucking lemonade commercial with iced tea. <laughs> Living without laws. Slab city. Oh, it's a Geico commercial. Oh, iced tea. Nice. <laughs> Boom. Hey guys, this is Ernie reporting for VBS from McCreel Valley. Yeah, this is a Vice video. Focused on all the crazy environmental issues going on in the region, from the air pollution to the drastic big die-off to the sewage-filled rivers and everything between. But during the shoot, we, you know, we also made a bevy of characters from our buddy Alan's town in Slab City, who are just as intriguing as all the eco problems. Want to have a gas in Slab City? The last three places. Three places in America. Yeah. It's isolation. It's desolation. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Right? Is it? That was an interesting one. That's like Roddy Roddy Pike. Whoa! Oh, that's that? It's my coffee mug just fell. God damn it. Huh? That's in California. It's the last free place in America. I wonder how many black people would want to go there. <laughs> 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 hey, it doesn't matter, man. I, Those motherfuckers wouldn't care. I, I like the party too, so it goes <laughs> Probably just might not want to go. I don't know. Right. He's riding a cooler. Wow. <laughs> freedom. <laughs> right? That's what freedom looks <laughs> like right there, yeah, man. Right around on the cooler full of beer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> little electric cart. It's the nice thing how you actually probably you actually probably can't do that. Well, I mean that guy's probably got some. Uh, Where he is, <laughs> he's got uh, a cooler natties. with three beer. He's got three natty ices in a cooler with without uh, ice. In yeah. a, uh, this cooler 
it has a little bit of a, a wall in it so that it can hold beer and then in the other compartment you can put an engine in there I think it's a motor yeah yeah there's a motor in there yeah, there's a difference. the motors in the other but part. there's a difference between an engine and a motor oh really mm-hmm an engine is combustion and a motor is electric oh you okay. think that was an engine I don't know I was yeah I was reading his words the subtitles let's go back a little bit here since the late 40s is that what he said oh that was a battery Yeah, that's electric, so it's a motor. Oh, okay. And a battery right there. Hey, can we pick that? It should make them feel all warm and fuzzy inside, knowing that your tax office is Yeah, see, he's getting some disability or some shit. Fucking mm. Social Security. It ain't a lot, but, you know, for someone like that, he don't mind living out in the There's desert no like California that. California culture out here. Yeah. What's that noise I mean? That's probably cars driving by my house. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> it sounds like there's a... Yeah, we love... You don't get... We're not off the side of a freeway, and it just sounds like cars are driving by. It doesn't really come up in the recording. Oh, okay. It's more in our headphones. Oh, okay. Yeah, propane refrigerator. How do they get food out of And there's dudes like that living on a, on boats and stuff, too, in harbors. <laughs> we were up in uh, Seattle. We lived in... We were staying in the largest marina in the Pacific Northwest. I forgot the name of it. But that should direct you to which one we were at. They had bus stops for kids and shit there. People just lived on their boats. But there's, yeah, old dudes just living on their vet pay or whatever. Fucking got their beer and cigarettes and some macaroni and cheese and they're fucking good, dude. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Simple life. Shit. I bet anything he gets fucking rage drunk every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Did you see how many natty, natty ice cans are just mm-hmm. around his apartment? Look, they got them all lined up. <laughs> little community. Put, 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 putting around. With yeah. A little cruising cooler. Ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah, this is the guy. Yeah, this guy is great. Oh, Snake guy. Yeah, this fucking dude. He spends too much time by himself. What did he say? Hey, we're just like any other community. We have uh, we have polite people and we have dumbasses and everything in between. Mm-hmm. Relax. Remember your most Yeah, thanks for putting it around my neck. Appreciate that. So he's looking at that dude's like, he's oh. like, I can't move. Yeah, like uh, that dude that that had the snake around his neck just now. Uh-huh. He takes him to go score some fucking mess later. <laughs> I was trying to extract information from you. I might use a snake. (laughs) If I'm trying to extract information from you, I I, I might use a snake. It's psychological. Red touches yellow.
Look at his hand. Right? Hand is just going. Yeah, but see, I'm because of the way he is, he's got to feel more comfortable out there being that person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. He doesn't sleep as much as normal people, though, I would bet. Stoop? Huh? Stoop? Stoop? Sleep. Sleep. Yeah. Maybe not. He's probably awake more hours of the day than a normal person. Maybe. Oh, yeah. He's totally tweaking. What in the world? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely oh tweaking. Oh my dude. god. Tell me that guy's not Why tweaking. was that a woman's worth that money? Laugh. Why was he? Laugh. Right? What is. So, the, yeah. The, that's, this is yeah. just the snake. Yeah. What did he say? The snake is just an hors d'oeuvre. I'll eat it if I have to. I get my toe caught in something. This eh? is a snack. Yeah. But I'd rather eat a man's butt because it has more meat to it. Right. Then I'll crawl over. I'll eat a dog's butt if I have to. Now he's all walking down the road. I'll right. eat a dog's butt. I, if I were to transcribe that sentence and then read it back. What in the world is this guy trying to... They had subtitles right there, didn't they? They did. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. Oh, man. Yeah, don't do math. Yeah, you need to sleep. It's very good for you. It, but like, he's so knowledgeable. It's, the, it's weird. Sleep. It's a weird aspect of life. It, I would not want to be in the same room as that dude, but at the same time, really? he's so knowledgeable about... I just wanted, he, I was just, he's, so, he's so knowledgeable about snakes. I would, so well, like, I would spend enough time to be amused by that guy. Sure. You know, and depending on how threatening he actually seemed, I could tolerate it. Because I've had an insane friend before. Tolerate it? Mm-hmm. But I had an insane friend that my other friends thought that giving LSD would be the answer. Uh, yeah. I mean, it did help him a, lo- a little bit, but then I think it did more harm than good. I think it could help your higher needs, but it could kind of blow up. No, he was just ones. missing. A, a, you know, he misfired in a few spots, you yeah. know, and he just didn't really... It would probably be in the autism spectrum, mm. like uh, what's the really, the really light one? Aspergers. Yeah. Yeah. I would well, say Aspergers is not reading social cues. Uh, there's there's different ways because my friend's son is Aspergers too, and it's not always like that. You know what I mean? Okay. But that's like a very common, you know, mm. thing with. Yeah, they don't really notice social cues, but that's not like a. Always, no, they yeah. have difficulties in social interactions and nonverbal communication. Right, and so he did. He did. You know, mm-hmm. definitely had difficulty communicating, yeah. and he was a lot like that guy where he would he would be having these thoughts, mm-hmm. and so he would be sharing those thoughts, but what's coming out of his mouth is only inner, like it's intermittent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So, like, if I was... That's ah, hard to explain. Like, he's having a thought, but he's only sharing this much of you. And then he moves along the thought and then shares a little bit more. But there's, like, spaces in the thought that he leaves out. Mm-hmm. Like, like the main reason would be, why the fuck are you telling me this? Like, what? Yeah. You know? And it, he would never go, oh, hey, I was thinking about this the other day. He would just be like, the fucking stars are, are, are like suns and shit and they're all gonna burn out and he would just start telling you this and you're like what dude what the fuck are you talking about and then you know mm-hmm. and then he would skip to another part to where he was thinking he's explaining it to you but he skipped a part to where it's it, right that yeah, was very interesting that's to watch interesting. that take place yeah. that's an interesting way that it can go down yeah so he I think he's a botanist now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he went to school to learn botany. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think he moved to Oregon, something like that. He's a cool guy. Yeah. 
Man, those people give some of these. Like the person in the Vibes video that just gives me so much anxiety talking to him or, yeah. li- or listening to him. Well, I spent some time in, it's not in like my a- childhood. I spent some time in a trailer park. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You yeah. just kind of see that stuff. People it's are a little, they just perceive reality different. Mm-hmm. And they express themselves in different ways, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's just, yeah, it's all a matter of being able to for yourself being able to judge how harmful that person is like that guy that's the thing is that I don't have a spectrum of knowing that I don't have a you would have to listen to him for a while you would be stuck there longer than I would because I'd be like dude what the fuck what are you telling me this shit for I would just ask him like what what you know and I would try to figure out a way to get in there and but yeah, it's just certain. Like it's it's the way he chooses mm-hmm. to express himself. Yeah, he might not even he can't even help it. You know, it's just and, and to paint a fuller picture of my own reactions, I, I, there, I, I, I critique pretty actively. Mm-hmm. But when I'm around people with really strong personalities, I end up kind of taking a wallflower approach to where I'm like, whereas you would get you would. Oh yeah, be involved. I would kind of be. It depends. Like I said, you know, it, I would be watching and like just constantly thinking about it, looking at different ways of it. Yeah, you know, uh, if I saw a group of black dudes across the street and, I, and it made me feel a certain like, I don't know, I, I might just look at them and go, "Hey, how's it going, guys?" Just to break that tension. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Say hi to them. Yeah. Like who who doesn't like being say you know, smile and say hi. But like if I ever feel intimidated, that's usually what I do. I'm like, Hey, how's it going, man? Mm. You know, acknowledge their existence. And yeah. usually like those big scary guys mm. you know, like they just have the resting bitch face. Resting but bitch then face. when you acknowledge their existence, they're like, Oh hey, you know, and then you could really see their personality. And you're like, Oh, I can see this guy's cool. I can feel it happening in myself yeah. too. Because I have an expressive yeah. face. If I'm thinking about something, I'll have like a really intense look on my face. But and that's the moment someone says anything. Mm-hmm. It, breaks, it breaks down, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know why I made it a, bl- a group of black guys. Well, because but I'm just saying. I'm just, you're intimi- your t- your intimidation was, deep down. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I don't know. There's some around here. I probably wouldn't talk to. I heard gunshots the other night. You did? Mm-hmm. Oh. Very clearly. Fucking <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's scary. Mm-hmm. Oh. I was like, whoa. And then I was standing outside having a cigarette. Mm-hmm. Right? And then there was another guy walking down, the, like two guys walking down the street on opposite sides of the road. Mm-hmm. And, you know, boom, 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 you know? Oh, shit. And uh, about 30 seconds later, he's like, I sounded like gunshots. <laughs> and like, yeah, the fuck is that like gunshots? And yeah. I, I didn't say nothing because I, but I was like the third confirmation, like, yeah, that's not like motherfucking gunshots. Damn, yep. it's wild how because of the sound and the volume of a gunshot, you could be doing it in your home safely. What? Like shooting a gun? You could be in your home possibly, shooting. Possibly, gun? possibly, you could be in your home shooting at some like. But if because of the sound and volume of it, it affects like I'm just saying I'm not saying like I'm just saying no, you possibly Ill- could do it in your home like that's physically yeah. possible. It, it's illegal. It's illegal, but it's physically yeah. possible. But everyone, uh, everyone for like yeah, a solid of course, half a mile around you is immediately it tenses up because you have no idea it's that loud. Well, I guess it's just amazing how le- just how fucking loud it is how many guns have you shot uh like how many times have i shot guns or <laughs> literally how many guns have i shot yeah how many guns have you shot one just one one what kind, what kind of gun was it it's like a high-powered rifle oh rifle was mm-hmm. it pretty loud it was pretty loud yeah got it in, got it, had an incredible whatever you call it the force back kick, kick had an mm-hmm. incredible kick to it yeah <laughs> went out to drove like drove like five miles out into farmland and yeah. shot it like a bale of hay with a target on it yeah my stepdad used to take me out and shoot guns yeah had a Colt 45 big mm-hmm. ass fucking 10 inch barrel on it mm-hmm. <laughs> then you know 22 and they sh- they take me out uh, on the farm you get paid for shooting crows 
Oh, well. Back in the day. To shoot crows? Mm-hmm. You gotta have a pretty good shot to shoot a crow, right? Not really. No? You just gotta see just, one. Just do it while they're perched, right? Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, shoot him in the air. What about cro- are, do crows just like eat up at crops? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yep, and they're looking for food. Oh, all right. And some people put little strips of uh, reflective, like ribbon. Mm, okay. That'll scare them off sometimes. Scarecrows. That's why scarecrows are a thing. Mm, mm, mm. You know, in the cornfields. Reflective ribbon. That'll do the trick. Just light reflecting. Yeah, like if you go out towards Yosemite on 140, mm-hmm. there's that or- uh, almond orchard out there. You mm-hmm. see little strips of reflective ribbon mm-hmm. in the trees. I wonder why they, mm-hmm. why light, why that type of light is framing. It was just movement. Mm-hmm. Sure. When you see light, it kind of like it looks like movement. Yeah. Well, anyway, I think we're gonna wrap this up, man. I gotta get something to drink. I do. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, make sure everyone listening at home take care of yourselves. And each other. Yep. Be happy. Be safe. Good parting words. Yep.